I think it was difficult not to not to have seen how that was was a penalty try, and we seemed to just think that the game was probably done, and and we just seemed to f- fall off the rails a little bit by by making error after error and allowing France into it. It was just absolute carnage what unfolded in the last ten minutes. So Saturday night, I think ten minutes to the end, I think we've just got enough to secure a grand slam, and then the horror show started, and. Um, you know, it's been pretty tough since then to really just put everything into perspective, really. What went wrong? Where could we have done better and all that? And you just keep going around in circles, really. Dan, how are you feeling? Much the same, Lee, really. Just a range of emotions, really. Disappointment, frustration, anger in terms of just how how we managed to let it slip. Uh, what, what we were in control of, the penalty try that never was, is just something that is beyond me how it, how it wasn't given and um, to have put everything into it and uh, and to have come up short is um, like Foxy said it's been it's been disappointing but that's kind of how it goes and I've, I've, I haven't been able to sort of stomach watching the game back yet to be honest certainly not the last sort of 15 minutes or so and it'll be a tough one to um, tough one to get over I think Maybe it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things but would you rather be on the field in those last 10 minutes than having to sit on the sidelines and watch for both of you? Yeah, hundred percent. Especially when I had to sit next to Biggs. <laughs> there was there was chairs flying, everything, water <laughs> bottles going everywhere. We were saying, folks, when we were in the changing room, we should have done the podcast uh, uh, straight after the game. You'd have had good entertainment. You'd have had good viewing figures. I think on uh, tomorrow morning, if we'd done that. <laughs> It would have had to be a post watershed show. I think. <laughs> uh, obviously, you want to be on the field at the end, and you you feel that you might have a bit more control of it all. But um, just sat there watching it, and it's just yeah. Uh, yeah. We saw those pictures of you, Foxy, um, sitting on the pitch, on the phone. Who did it hit the hardest, do you think? Was it a, a tough one collectively for everyone? I think, you know, 14 out of 15 um, of the starting team all had a Grand Slam. And it was probably the first time we've ever uh, lost a situation like that in all my time with Wales. Um Whenever we've been in, uh, you know, been able to control our destiny, we've always delivered, and I think that was that was the shock. Like we you know we didn't deliver at the end there, and for me, I, I just wanted to get out of the change rooms because it was it was pretty dire in there. The boys were just quiet, and you know, I just wanted to get out and take my mind off things as best I could. Foxy, the boys reckon you were on the phone to your bank manager that the grand slam bonus had gone. He was heartbroken for you. Yeah, he said I got to play for another three years. <laughs> Boys, but in in fairness, just to cheer you up a bit, Ireland beat England. <laughs> <laughs> it's not all doom and gloom on House and Rugby yeah. this week. We have we have we have someone with a smile on their face. And and in fairness, Lee, Scotland got over Italy. Well, how dare you? Uh, everyone's Scottish this week. I think that's what we're going to be building up to in, in this conversation. You've been watching The House of Rugby Season 3 on Joe.